The new generation of basketball is full of players called unicorns. Rembenyama. Looking back at the history of the game, the term is relatively new. But the concept itself started with a tall, lanky kid from the small Eastern European country of Latvia. There was a there was a scout agent that came by and was just looking for some young like prospects back home in Latvia. Recorded some of our games and, and sent out the tape to different teams in Italy, Spain, and so on. Nos llega un video de de una gente que lo debió haber grabado en un partido. Pastor, tengo este chaval, es súper interesante. Eh, lo llevamos. Al principio hubo alguna duda, pero luego rápidamente fuimos a invitarlo a la, que viniera a probar a Sevilla. I went to Spain for the tryout. It was so hot. Uh, I was skinny, like 14 year old kid. Like my conditioning was terrible in those, that kind of weather and that kind of heat. Fue que lo vimos con 1.95, 1.96. En ese vídeo, cuando llegó aquí medía dos metros y cuando llegó en septiembre medía dos cinco. I saw the dorms. I said, no chance. I'm coming back here. Like no way. But then as the summer went on, I was like, like my brother was talking to me. Look, they have an ACB team. You could, you know, maybe one day play at that level. And I was like, okay. I started to put it in my head. And at the end, my name is Christoph Porzingis. I play for Casal Seville in Spain. El caso de Chris, uh, primero que te viene en la cabeza es talento, talento y, y la, la capacidad física. Siempre bromeábamos que cuando hacíamos sprints, tú viéndole desde lejos parecías súper lento, porque un tío de un tío de, de dos, diecis, dieciséis, diecisiete, pero te ponías al lado de él y hacías un sprint y no le superabas porque tenía unos pasos gigantes y tampoco era tan lento al lado cuando estabas al lado de él. Perfecto entre Berti Rodríguez y presta por Sing. Presta por Sing es saliendo de dos canastón. Qué taponazo de presta por Sing es. The coaching staff in Seville were tasked with developing the seven foot two Porzingis in a way that would maximize his talents. A project that the longtime head coach of the club took personally. Bueno, pues fue también una gozada entrenarle. A ver, normalmente cuando tengo un jugador, pues intento aprovecharle en Eh, en sus cosas mejores que tienen ese es el mismo caso que pasó con Cristas Porzingis entonces yo no tengo previsto que vaya a llegar a un sitio o a otro sino que aprovecho las cosas buenas que tiene sus fundamentos defensivos ofensivos de rebote y poco a poco pues vamos añadiendo cosas que que no están muy lejanas para que las pueda usar you know, it was always like a dream for me to play in the NBA, but realistically, I was like, nah, I don't, you know, who gets there? Like, nobody gets there. And then, yeah, 16, 17, I kept improving, like, so much during those years. And then we had the under-18 European Championship. I think, I don't know, I averaged, like, five blocks a game or something. And, you know, I, I took off, like, physically compared to how I was, like, 15, 16 years old. And that's when I was like, that's when a lot of interest started, like, coming around and a lot of scouts the next season started to come to our practices and stuff, I was like, okay, probably going to be there. I don't know if next year, but probably the year after that. With his name now entered into the 2015 NBA draft, Kristaps would find himself facing the same questions as many talented European players before him. And with the widely unknown prospect projected to go somewhere in the top five, the narratives were just getting started. Chris Porzingis, the mystery man in the 2015 NBA draft, a native of Latvia, seven foot one, and he hasn't turned 20 years old yet. I think if he were playing at Kentucky, Duke, or whatever, we'd be talking about him in the same sentences that we're talking about Carl Anthony Towns and Jill Okafor uh, as a number one pick in the draft. Christoph Porzingis is, I think, one of the most interesting guys in the draft. Porzingis is a really unique 
basketball player because on one hand, he's a seven footer who has elite athleticism that you look for in an NBA prospect, but can also step out and shoot the three. Fit is important for him. If, if he goes somewhere where they just throw him to the fire and they don't really have a plan for him, I think that's gonna be tough for him just because physically, maybe he's not quite ready right away. The biggest adjustment for Porzingis when he gets to the NBA is gonna be the strength and physicality, and that will hinder his development early on. With the fourth pick in the 2015 NBA draft, the New York Knicks select Kristaps Porzingis from Leopaya, Latvia. He last played for Sevilla in Spain. Were you shocked that you were booed? No, they, they told me it was going to happen. They told you? Yeah. They did? Yeah, they were like, ah, you know, if, if the Knicks actually pick you, you, you know, it might happen. And it did happen. New York Knicks fans were at the Barclays Center booing because we recognize that we have been hoodwinked, bamboozled, led astray, run amok, and flat out deceived by Phil Jackson and the New York Knicks. Honestly, I was I came in like very prepared. Like my English was good. Um, I was already kind of in my mind like for a couple of years thinking, oh, I'm going to the NBA. Like I want to, you know, listen to the music, like learn everything I can about the culture, you know. Coming in so young too, I was like so ignorant. I didn't realize like the magnitude of like getting drafted by the Knicks, like being in New York City, playing at guard. I didn't even realize like what that was at that time. I was just, boom, I'm in the NBA. That's it, you know what I mean? <laughs> He's a different breed, man. He's not your average 19-year-old. He has a chip on his shoulder. He has, he has attitude. He has flair. He, he wants to get better. He wants to be the best. It's hard blocked by Porzingis. Blocked again. Oh, no. Porzingis. Oh, no. Oh, from Green Bay. Porzingis with authority. Erupting after this stupendous stuff by Porzingis. Early in his career, Porzingis would be tasked with finding his place alongside franchise centerpiece Carmelo Anthony, trying to build chemistry with a future Hall of Famer under the microscope of the New York media. Like, I was just so young, I didn't have a care in the world. Like, whatever was happening around me, I was like, oh, okay, this is the NBA, like, all right, cool. But honestly, looking back now, it, was, it wasn't the most stable situation. Inside and throws it down at the end. The steal by Jackson. The Jackson by Porzingis. Marking in the head of the pack goes up. Blocked by Porzingis. Whoa, way outside. Hits the three. Porzingis from way downtown. Porzingis with the slam. By his third year in the league, Kristaps had found his rhythm as one of the game's bright young stars, elevating his game to an all-star level by 2018. However, during a routine February matchup with the Bucks, Porzingis would see the trajectory of his career change in an instant. Much better than last year. Nice feet inside, and Porzingis throws it down, and he's hurt. Porzingis grabbing his left knee, and he's in some severe pain. He's gonna have to be helped off. And the Knicks fans and the organization holds their breath. Huge news from the NBA that has been plastered on the back page of the New York Daily News. No, Kristaps Porzingis tearing the ACL in his left knee in a loss of the Bucks. While Porzingis had still been loyal to New York early in his career, Tensions between himself and the front office would rise during contract negotiations in 2019, a meeting that would leave the two sides on opposite ends of the spectrum moving forward. There was a lot of um, there was a lot of things that happened prior to that date, that meeting. You know, um, I got hurt. I I brought in my own guy to do the rehab, and 
the team didn't like it. There was no communication, no good communication between us. And then time went on, time went on, and, and we had the meeting, and uh, we set our part, kind of preparing to ask for a trade. But I, w I wish we never did. Uh, in really? The, yeah, but the, in a sense, like the trade was already, they were going to trade me anyway. You know, it's just that we went in and asked for a trade, and then <laughs> like two minutes later, I was <laughs> traded already. It was already right, right, anyway, right. You know, it was just so they could say, oh, he asked for a trade, and boom, that's it. He didn't want to be here. Let's get to the story everybody's been talking about over the last few hours, and that is the, the trade of uh, the unicorn, Christoph Porzingis, who has voiced his displeasure uh, with management in New York, wanted out, uh, and gets his wish traded to Dallas. I think it's good for Dallas. You know, you got two young European stars that will definitely play well together. I like my chances with Porzingis and Doncic going forward. I like my chances. While he would spend the entirety of the 2018-19 season recovering from his ACL injury, Porzingis would be given a fresh start for the first time in his career. Led by one of the fastest rising talents in the game, Luka Doncic, the Mavericks had been in the market for a talented big man. On paper, the idea made complete sense. And early on, Kristaps seemed to be thriving in his new city. 14 rebounds in the last 13 games. Oh, that's nice. Porzingis with the... Oh, that's nicer! Oh! Brunson throws it up ahead. Kleba to Porzingis. Porzingis wins the floor and rocks the house! Okay, you gotta take him. And Ross Cole for the foul, and Porzingis nails the jumper. Giannis on the bench now. Here's an alley -oop. and a one-handed flush by Porzingis. Once again, injuries would end the season of Porzingis for the second straight season, as he would go down with a torn meniscus following Game 3 of his playoff debut in 2020. Concerns about the durability of Kristaps would once again rise following the elimination of the Mavericks that season. But after missing only the first nine games of the shortened 2021 season, Porzingis once again put fears to bed with yet another solid season, this time helping lead Dallas back to the playoffs alongside Luka for a second straight year. And here is Dottich giving oh. Porzingis with the jam. Timeout Atlanta. The 2021 playoffs would prove to be a divisive series between Porzingis and the Dallas Mavericks. Kristaps himself was unhappy with the role given to him on the court during the series, a rift that would lead to poor play by the former All-Star. Now, honestly, like reflecting back on it, I just should have just said, okay, this is what you want. Like I will do it like that to the best of my ability. But at that point still, I was a little bit young and, and I was like, like do it, I say like out of spite, like oh, on purpose. I will not move from this corner. Like that, that little, that little bit of mindset, you know. And it's, it was not correct. Like, but of course I played hard and I like gave everything on defense. And, but a little bit of that was like creeping up on me, you know, that 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 kind of feeling. And it's not a good feeling to play with. Like if somebody, I think, at that stage of my career, presented it to me the right way, and said. You know, this is what we need to do. This is what we need from you. This is you're going to be way more effective doing this. Like, kind of explain it to me better. Um, I think that would have made a difference a little bit. I could have done some things better, and 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 it didn't come out the way like all of us envisioned, maybe. But definitely learned a lot from that. According to our Tim McMahon and Adrian Wojnarowski, the Mavs they are trading Kristaps Porzingis to oh. the Wizards for Spencer Dinwiddie and Davis. You know, it was weird. It was a, for the first time in my career. I mean, that's only the second transition I've made, you know, from to a different team. But but uh, it was very like it felt very familiar and like came in very easy. I don't know if it was because it was during the season or why, but I felt super comfortable here right away and. But of course, it gave me more time and the season, start playing, get a feel for everybody, get a feel for this building. Um, and now I feel, yeah, feel like, feel like at home. As an organization, the Washington Wizards were in a much different circumstance than the Mavericks, providing Porzingis with something he had never had in his career. 
freedom from expectations. And with the Wizards out of contention, Kristaps immediately began to rebuild his career outside of the spotlight. They're for Washington right now, Drew. Oh, Morseus catches Anthony Davis and the foul. Here's Morris to Beal to A. Oh, great pass by Porzingis to Kuzma, the no look. Franchise history in the first half as Kristaps Porzingis rocks the rim. In that matchup. Shot clock at one. KP is uh, very unique because of his size, length, and ability to shoot the ball. Gisbert back out to four, Zingas for three. He's very hard to defend outside. He's still capable of going inside and punishing, you know, small guys. Beal, beating four, Zingas down low, he turns around and shoots over. P.J. Tucker, Sims blocked by four, Zingas. What a rejection from Kristaps Porzingis. He has one in this game. Porzingis. It's going to be huge. It's going to start with him right here, Porzingis. Nice feed to Kristaps Porzingis, and he rocks it with two hands. Of course, there were a lot of people that, not a lot of people, but there were people that watched how I played last season. And, you know, let's say on social media, there were, you know, whenever somebody said, oh, Porzingis has been, where has been? He has been, you know? And they would like be like, oh, yeah, no, he had a great year in Wizards and, and so on. But in general, yeah, not a lot of people knew that I played uh, some of the best basketball, if not my best season of my career. And, and I was able to, to have a good year and a half there, having fun and enjoying basketball. And, and, and yeah, I fell in love with the city also in Washington. And out to Porzingis. Side step three, he hits it at the buzzer. Putting together one of the best seasons of his career, a season where he not only played in the most games since his rookie year, but also averaged a career high in points per game, Porzingis had proven in the shadows that he was more than capable of being a centerpiece for an NBA franchise. As a member of the Wizards, Kristaps had further developed his all-around game. And while the opportunity to find himself again on the court had been much needed, Porzingis himself knew that he wanted to be a major contributor on a contending team once again. Nearly two years after the public opinion turned on him in Dallas, Kristaps knew it was time to make a run at the NBA championship. As you said, the Celtics made their big move of the summer, most likely last week, when before the draft they traded Marcus Smart and got back Kristaps Porzingis. You got a seven foot three dude who can defend, who can also hit perimeter shots, and he's playing alongside Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Yeah. Okay, this is a big deal. The Boston Celtics have elevated, as far as I'm concerned, to the favorites to win it all. I wanted to be challenged. I wanted to maybe like, okay, my last year in Dallas, I didn't have the best uh, playoff series. We got kicked out of the first round. And now I'm like, okay, I have to prove to everybody that I can play on a playoff team or a championship caliber team and perform and, and remind everybody, okay, that, that can happen, but here I am, you know? And just the idea of that challenge was like, okay, this is what I want. As the two stars continue to struggle. Oh, KP! Ashes to ashes! Dust to dust! Second, Boucher in a strong take. Perzingis with a denial. While Boston had already been an NBA contender for the past several years, featuring a core of all-star talent that had reached the conference finals in three of the past four seasons, the Celtics currently find themselves sitting comfortably as the number one seed in the East, with Kristaps himself adding a dynamic to their roster 
that had been holding them back in previous seasons. Featuring a recharged skill set and improved confidence, Porzingis adds an elite big man presence that elevates Boston to one of the league's most dangerous teams. The scoreboard yet. Porzingis hits the three. Out of Porzingis, give and go action, Tatum. Oh, sweet. Whether it was the pre-draft doubters or negativity from the 2021 playoffs, Porzingis has faced ridicule from the moment he entered the league. However, fueled by a desire to prove naysayers wrong, Kristaps has taken advantage of a rare opportunity over the past three years. An opportunity to reshape his craft and capitalize on the best situation of his career thus far. A chance to bring a championship to the historic Boston Celtics. Oh, you definitely feel the, you feel like the culture and the, and then even the history like here, it's very strong, right? And these guys have already built something, you know, that is very close to winning it all, you know? And coming into this kind of environment, it's just a different energy. Like, this is, we all know what the goal is here. And it's just, it just adds more motivation, more, it already adds more to my passion, to my drive, you know, just being around these kind of, this kind of environment, these kind of people that, that, that want to achieve the ultimate goal. And, and for me, that's, that's all I can ask for. Now, having overcome negativity that would end the careers of most, Porzingis is finally living up to the potential that scouts saw when he was just a kid from Latvia. And the unicorn is retaking his place as one of the game's most talented big men.